Come one, come all to a match of Dungeons and Dragons, an adventure game unlike any other. Jarrett Nichols, the program organizer and one of two Dungeon Masters, has been guiding players through this unique adventure as dice are rolled and stats are crunched. I'm the Dungeon Master for the CYS Youth Center's um, Dungeons and Dragons summer program. Me and a, a couple other guys have been meeting with the youth to teach them how to play D&D, &D, um, for all the way from character creation um, to learning how to actually play using the mechanics that D&D um, &D uses. And we have nine kids total that are playing. Because we had that many, we ended up splitting the party into two groups. It's clear it as a tabletop role-playing game, so a lot of it comes down to the players um, portraying the characters they've created. So when they're making characters, they choose a basic race that has stats. So if you're a dwarf, you may be short and stocky. If you're an elf, you may be tall and slender. My character is a dragonborn barbarian. He can't read the situation and likes poking at other people's buttons and annoying them. My character, Twilight, is a tiefling. A sorcerer, meaning she can do a bunch of magic. She is a happy-go-lucky, very trusting and friendly person who can be too curious at times. My group that I'm in charge of is in a swamp terrain and are trying to help a group of uh, creatures that are within this swamp uh, defend their village from some other creature. One of them we uh, we encountered was called a twig blight, meaning it was like a group. If you've seen Guardians of the Galaxy, it was pretty much group. The dice are used for probability. It could be for a variety of things based on your stats. So if you have someone that's trying to uh, parkour up a wall, you would roll the dice to see how well you you manage to parkour. I have a set number I desire for you to reach to be successful. If it's a short wall, it may be 10, 12. If it's a tall wall, it may be 16, 17, 18. Um, and you have to meet that number, and it's kind of decisive of the DM. It is also used within combat, so if you're attacking a creature, you do X amount of damage, um, dependent on the weapon and your player skills. Something I enjoy about D&D &D is that you get to make your own decisions. Oh, I want to jump on this giant creature, and then you actually get to do it. It's not like, oh no, that's out of the rules. It was based on our imagination, so whatever we came up with in our minds, we could do on the in the game. D and D is all about your creativity. Um, I've not DM'd but a couple times now, but my favorite is the world building. I get to come up with the city they start out in. I get to design the swamp. I get to choose what creatures they may encounter in their travel. I think that's probably a very cool aspect of D and D is it can be strictly within the mind of you and fellow players of the game. We are all using our collective creativity and hopefully the Dungeon Master gives you enough to help imagine what the place looks like. The board is just a grid. Um, the rest is us being creative together. I look forward to it every week, so. Definitely would do again, 10 out of 10. At the end of 2018, AFN staff took a trip to Mech to learn about the new photovoltaic system or solar power system being constructed as the first prototype in the Kwajalein Atoll. We recently visited the island to see what's new with the power on Mech. Recently the Missile Defense Agency funded some upgrades to the power plant. One being the living conditions for the generator operators during their shifts on island with new sleeping quarters, kitchen, laundry equipment, as well as an upgraded bathroom. The big change to the plant, though, is the new ventilation system that reduces the amount of salt and moisture that gets into the building, which in turn extends the life of the equipment running the island. Currently, the power plant is the main source of power per the request of the MDA as we approach mission time on MEC. After mission, the solar system will become the primary source of power again on island. So let's talk to USACA's environmental engineer, Derek Miller, about the PV system here on Mech. 
Overall, it's a uh, 2.4 uh, megawatt on the DC side, uh, 1.8 on the AC side, solar generator. Pulse, so a reminder from the last episode we did on the system, DC, direct current, is the current that is taken in from the panels, while AC, alternating current, is the current after conversion through the inverter. So uh, it includes uh, about uh, seven acres of photovoltaics, uh, ground mount solar photovoltaics, uh, switch gear, string of micro inverters, and then uh, power distribution to the powerhouse, as well as uh, a microgrid control system. If you got lost again, check back to episode 18 for an explanation on how the solar power system works. So the system in the daytime fully powers the, the island load, about uh, 600 kilowatts. Um, the, uh, the battery banks, uh, which there are two of, can, uh, can take swing load for uh, about uh, four to six hours, uh, depending on how, how well they're loaded. So all in all, um, about 18 hours of the, the day, uh, as far as the, the power demand go, is, is in the, the PV system. And then when the sun's not shining and, and the battery's drained, um, the system's uh, reloaded at night and, and powered by the traditional diesel-fired generator assets. As I mentioned earlier, MEC is currently not using the PV system during mission times. Yeah, so MDA, as the customer, made the, the call, which of course mission first, to, uh, to keep on the traditional generator assets until the, the PV is fully uh, proved out and uh, has a little more operational history behind it. You know, certainly with the power redundancies uh, built into the microgrid, we definitely see it as power improvement in terms of their energy surety. So, so we think once uh, we're able to kick the wheels on the system with MDA, they'll, they'll be on board uh, to have it on during uh, mission times as well as uh, pre-mission times. So what has changed with the system since we last visited? Well, more of them, right? <laughs> Lots more. And then uh, we did have to do some uh, drainage improvements, right? So it's a low profile system, 10 uh, inches off the ground on the near point. Uh, so drainage on the field is important uh, to convey that water away. So we had to tweak some of the drainage. Um, of course, we got in all the electrical uh, distribution equipment, uh, transformers, switch gear, as I mentioned. Um, the batteries have been proofed out. Um, system was commissioned. And uh, and yeah, we got, we got power now at the, at the powerhouse, moving on the existing switch gear throughout the island. One concern during construction was the durability of the system here in our humid and salty conditions in the atoll. Yeah, so so far so good. Um, you know, the panels themselves are extruded aluminum frames. Um, essentially, the photovoltaic cells are a uh, fan step of plastic and, and uh, you know, metal uh, alloy. So, um, so far so good on the panels themselves. And then it's just fighting mother nature on anything that's steel and has a, an iron component to it on the, uh, the battery uh, containers as well as the uh, transformer switch gear type of enclosures. So like anything, preventative maintenance. Yeah, no, so first phase of the, the test bed prototype type of system, right? So uh, we hope to, to move this forward on, on Kwajalein, Roy, other islands. You know, the, the resources out here, wind and solar are, are uh, substantial. We get 30% better uh, uh, solar than stateside, right? So there's some, some economy. So we wanna get this one right first and then transfer it to some of the main islands um, throughout the atoll. So. tested their endurance during the Kwajalein hot wing mission. Ten rounds of wings covered with the hottest sauces on the planet. 